Adobe has just released the new version of Photoshop, lots of updates, and it's now Photoshop CC 2019. And right now I'm gonna show you my five favorite features. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So today I'm going to show you my five favorite features inside of CC 2019. Now you might notice I'm wearing my Adobe Max uh, hoodie, and that's because right now I'm at Adobe Max and I'm teaching seven classes and I've had a thousand people sign up for these classes already. Thanks guys, and you know what, I can't wait to see you all, and some of you, I'm saying hi to you right now. So anyway, just to let you know, I love Photoshop, and this is my little fairy Photoshop pillow. So without further ado, let's jump in and have a look at these new features that have been announced at Adobe Max. The very first one is Content Aware Fill, has a whole bunch of new features. So you're probably familiar with Content Aware Fill. We want to remove something from a photograph, you know, we'll make a selection with our selection tool, one of our marquee tools or whatever, and we're just gonna go around here, and we wanna remove these things. We hit Shift Delete, brings up the content aware fill, and then we click OK. And then we get, you know, sometimes a good result, sometimes not such a good result. Sometimes we'll have areas of here, you know, going all over the place. So let's see what's new. I'm gonna make the selection again. Let's just make this selection around there. And then we're gonna go under Edit, and we're gonna go under Content Aware Fill. Now, the first thing you'll notice is we get a preview on the side there, and this shows us what it's going to look like after the content aware fill is applied. Now, in this case, it's not too bad, but in a lot of times, you know, we're going to see things like sometimes the land appears in the middle of the ocean, and there's a little spot there that shouldn't be there, and things like that. So what we can do now is we can tell content aware fill which areas we want to use for the sample and which areas we do not want to use for the sample. Now, I'm going to go into other tutorials much more depth, um, but right now I'm just going to give you a, just an overview. So we're just going to scoot over here and we're just painting over this land because I don't want that to be included in our selection. Notice the selection here will update and start to look better. We don't want this stuff here. We don't want the ripples in there. Let's get rid of all of that. And you can see it as it updates, it gets better and better. Now if we wanted to include areas like some of this glossy area in the sample, we would hold down the Alt or the Option key and we could paint in there and say, you know what, we want to include this. So you can pinpoint exactly the areas that you want to use for the sample to fill. Now, there's other features on the right-hand side. Once again, I'm going to do another tutorial on this where we go in depth. But we can do things, we've got more control, we've, we know color adaptation, that's not new. But now we can work in rotation, so we're working things like wheels and different things like that. We it can actually rotate the samples now instead of just stamping them over the top of each other. And then we can work with things like scale and mirror. So, you know, maybe a face or something, you know, we can grab one side and let it sample on the other side. Once again, I'm going to do another tutorial on that really soon. I'm super excited about this because uh, Content Aware Fill is super useful. And now it's going to be a lot more useful. So the second feature is called Frames. And if you've ever created shapes or, or rectangles, tried to create thumbnails and things like that, this is going to help a lot. Okay, say for example, I wanted to create some thumbnails. The first thing I would do is I would go down here and I would create a shape, maybe something like a rounded rectangle. And I'm going to click and drag it out. That's my rectangle. I want to put a photograph inside it. So I would bring a photo in. I'm going to drag this in from the library and just hit enter. Now I want to put this photo inside the thumbnail. So what I would do is I hold down the Alt or the Option key, go between the layers, click. Now it becomes a clipping group. Making sure I'm selecting that, I can move it around, and there's my first thumbnail. Now the thing is, if I wanted to do more thumbnails, I could go in here and just hit the Alt or the Option key and drag out copies of the thumbnail. Now notice it already gets confusing. <laughs> Let's bring our clipping group back to where it should be. Holding down Alt or Option, we drop it in there. Then we want another photo. We go in here, we move that photo above it, clip it, and move things around. Okay. This takes a lot of time. There's now a much better way of doing this. Okay, now we use the frame tool. We grab it here, and I'm just gonna drag out a rectangle. There's the first one. And you know what, I wanna create four. So why don't I select it, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and just drag out some more copies of it. Excellent. Let's quickly align these. I'm just gonna pull my layers palette out here. 
and put it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the shift key, select them all, and it's align them to the center. And now we want to distribute them evenly by clicking there. Great. Now to get the photos in here, it's so easy. We just click and drag in there. We're dropping the photos in there. There's one, two, three, four. And to reposition them, what we do is we're going to select them with our frame tool. Select the frame you want to work on. Make sure you're working in the photo, not the frame. And then just hit Control T, and now we can scale it. Oh, another new feature, by the way. You know how we usually hold down the Shift key, constrain proportions when we're scaling things? Now we don't have to. It works like every other application. We just click and drag, and it will now, from the corner, it will now scale proportionally. So we can just kind of move that in there. And there we go. So we can start to do that on all of them. All right, by the way, if you want to scale non-proportionally, just hold down the alt or the option key. So it kind of flips that functionality. Let's look at number three. I just recently did a tutorial on HDR panoramas. And um, I'll, I'll give you a link underneath because it's still useful for when you want to have a little bit more manual control. But now we can do HDR panoramas directly in a single step inside of Camera Raw, which is here inside of Photoshop, and also in Lightroom Classic. So I'll do another tutorial later too on some more Lightroom Classic features. If you guys want that, let me know in the comments underneath. In fact, what do you guys prefer, Photoshop or Lightroom tutorials? Let me know. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to choose File Open. Now these photo photographs are bracketed, so there's three brackets on each, and then I did a vertical panorama using my Sony a7 III camera. So I'm going to open them here and all these raw files are going to open inside of Camera Raw. There they are, we can see them all in there, the thumbnails. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all. Control A or just click on the top here and choose Select All. So I believe we've got something like 21 images. In fact, it tells us here there's 21 images. Now, I could merge these into HDRs and then once all the HDRs are done, I can put those into Panorama. That was last week. Now I can choose to go to Merge to HDR Panorama click on there and now Photoshop is going to do all the work for me. It's going to build the HDR files in the background and then it's going to merge them all into a panorama. So it all happens in one step and look at that. This is what we have right there. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on. Look at that. The whole beach scene here in high dynamic range. So I could do things like boundary warp, you know, where I could just get rid of all the edges there just by merging them together. Oh, look at that. There's a paraglider there. Or what I could do is, if I don't want to warp it, I could just choose to auto crop. Or we can use content aware fill, all those things. It doesn't really matter, but the point is, I click merge. We're going to save this file. Okay, so now we've got, you know, the full control of all of that dynamic range there from an HDR to create a beautiful panorama. Let's look at the next feature. Okay, so feature number four is layer blending modes. You know how much I love these and how much I use them. In fact, I've got a free ebook. I'll give you a link underneath to all my information on layer blending modes. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so here's an abstract piece I created and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna duplicate it. Just to kind of show you how it works, we can see that, turn it on and off. It's looking like that. That's in luminosity blending mode. Why don't I pull the opacity all the way up so we can see it better. But now we want to go through the different blending modes. All we need to do now is lift this up and look at this. As we hover over there, we get a preview inside of our document of what this new blending mode is going to look like. So I can go down there and say, you know what, I really like that color there and overlay. And done. So I said I was going to give you five new features. So the next one is kind of some UI stuff that is super exciting. I'm going to show you quickly. Um, one of them is the color swatch. If we go over here, we click on the color swatch here and we can go down to the color wheel. And now we have a color wheel, which is much more intuitive for looking at things like complementary colors or matching colors. So rather than seeing just a strip or a block, we can actually see the entire color wheel and then we can go to the opposite side of it to match colors or go to the corners for triadic colors and different things like that. And now we have a color wheel where we can choose the hue or the color, like sliding around. And then of course we can choose our saturation by moving up there or our luminosity or brightness, or you can use HSL sliders right there. 
to pick your own colors. So, you know, if we want some kind of magenta color, we can click like that. It looks a little bit more like the one in Painter and some of the other applications you've been working with. The other one, as I already mentioned, when we're scaling things, if we want to constrain it, we don't have to hold down the shift key anymore. That works by default. The other one is undo. Why is it with Photoshop you have to hit Command Option Z or Control Alt Z to undo on Photoshop, but every other program is Control Z to undo or Control Shift Z to redo or whatever it is. But check this out. Now we don't have to do that. We want undo, we just hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. So now the we have multiple undos that work just like you would expect any every other program. So you don't have to learn specific you know things in Photoshop. Now for people like me who've been using Photoshop for a long time and a lot of you, it's going to take us a little bit of, you know to retrain our muscle memory because we love to just go reach for that shift key when we're doing things in the option key it just kind of happens. But we're going to love the new behavior once we get used to it. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button into dust. If you love Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, subscribe to Photoshop Cafe right now. Just hit that uh, subscribe thing. I'd love to have you on board so I can give you a new tutorial every single week. Also, don't forget to hit that little bell notification so that YouTube will let you know when I upload a new video. So anyway, guys, I've got a lot more coming on these new features. I'm going to dig into depth. Let me know in a comment underneath, though, which is your favorite new feature and which one would you like me to go more in depth with? So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. i got to get back to Max. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.